Okay, so now this is a video. Um, hey guys, sorry for earlier on trying to live stream, it didn't work. As you can see, I am still soaking wet from trying to live stream uh, up there above in the cupola of the um, Presidio County Courthouse. And fortunately, my phone kept shutting off because it's too hot. It kept giving me a temperature alert. And the only way I could use it would be if it was an emergency call or something. If not, the phone would try and damage itself. So, c'est la vie. Well, back to the quick tour. And um, I'm going to walk you around and we're going to look at this as a video together. When we finally look at this, I'll be there with you the first time. Um, so that way we can, um, we can still chat and be connected. Anyway, here we are in Alfred Giles's original construction built in the 1880s to replace the two previous county uh, town halls that were here and um, it's a cool building uh, it's a beauty in fact um, it has a lot to to say about it um, I'm hoping to be able to pull up an old picture for you here of it onto my media. Give you a feeling of what it would have used to look like back here. Anyway, here we go. So this was the building back originally before we actually end up building a town around us here as well. Um, and uh, Alfred Giles built a lot in San Antonio and North Texas, but also built this fine brick and stone building here which we're going to take a good look at when we especially as we walk through it and then outside of it so up these stairs was the way to the, the cupola that i've left and probably will meld together with the rest of these videos and let's just kind of look down through the county courthouse neat space um presidio county also, there is a town called Presidio, uh, and uh, it's to the southwest of here, towards Big Bend, which is a national park. Um, right, so this building, built in 1886, it is an Italianate style with Mansford roofs and dormers with triangular pediments and iron crustings, which we're going to Got a bit of a view of earlier on. Here you get the United States flag along with the Lone Star flag, the flag of Texas. Um, Texas has had six different flags fly over it, and that's why they call it the Six Flag. Well, that's why they call it Great Adventure, the Six Flags. You know, Great Adventure because it's the Six Flags of Texas. Um, and that's a Spanish flag, Texan flag, French flag. Confederate flag, U.S. flag. I feel like was that six? I think that was six. Spanish, French, U.S. Confederate, Texan. What was the sixth flag? Colonial? No. It'll come to me. All right. Out the front, here are some examples of some old uh, fixtures, door handles, and hinges for this very building itself. And now we're outside. Hmm, much cooler out here than it is up in that rooftop that I've just come from. And here we get a look of the building from the outside now. Thank you, Alfred Giles. Okay, so it's weird doing a video without having you guys here with me right now, but that's what it is. We do the best that we can in every circumstance. We've got the central fire station over there and uh, an old theater here, the old palace theater. Um, and you're thinking to yourself right now, Chris, why are we in this one traffic light town? You know, like, why was this the place that we had to come and check out? Well, Marfa is a really interesting spot in that it's not just any small town in Texas. This is a place that was really put on the map uh, in 2010 
when the Huffington Post said that Marfa was going to be the next big thing, the next big tourist destination uh, was going to be here. And by 2015, Marfa was saying, excuse me, the Huffington Post was saying that it was all over at Marfa, that Marfa had killed itself, a victim of its own creation. Um, Marfa is a, a place that has attracted a, a real wide group of, of people. Well, the people that live here, median income is only around $24,000 a year. It's not a lot of money. Um, but you also have ultra wealthy folks coming in who are, you know, your artists or your hipster crowd. In fact, when I was exploring before, I went into the Marfa and Presidio County um, Museum and the woman asked me, are you from Austin or are you from New York? And I said, well, I guess I'm living in New York. She said, yep, it's one or the other here these days, Austin or New York. And you get that feeling that um, the, the town caters to a, uh, a demographic group of travelers or visitors who don't really represent the people that live here very well. Um, but still, something's going on. Anthony Bourdain filmed one of his last episodes here. Ked and Bacon did a mini-series called I Love um, Dick, short for Richard, folks, short for Richard, here. Uh, Beyonce really helped put this small town on the map by taking a, a photo of herself out by um, the Marfa Prada, about 37 miles to the west by northwest of where we are right now. And once she posted that on her gram, to her gram fam of 110 million people, people started asking what's going on with Marfa. And um, since then, it's really attracted a whole different range of people. But starting back, if you want to go back to, to really 1950s, it was attracting a different crowd of folks um, because this was an early location of film shooting. In 1955, George Stevens came here with the Warner Brothers crew to film Giant. And Giant, amongst other stars, uh, featured James Dean, Elizabeth Taylor, and Rock Hudson. Um, so this is actually the hotel here, the Hotel Paisano, or El Paisano Hotel. This is the hotel where they, where they stayed. Over 300 cast members and crew members stayed in this hotel. Uh, it's a historic registry site now. And um, there's the other flag, the Mexican flag. This is also Mexico, of course it was. Now, I'm not gonna go in and live stream inside here, but uh, I do wanna show you really quick an idea of what it looked like in here, or what it looks like in here without going inside, because I went in and I filmed a video earlier on when no one was watching. Let's take a look together. There we go. Yeah, so this is like the dining room or uh, um, you know, function room. Here's the living room and the common room area with a fireplace and you'll notice all over the walls that there are also uh, pictures from that movie from Giant when Rock Hudson and Jimmy Dean and Elizabeth Taylor were here. This is the main foyer, beautiful tiling. Uh, you've got these really cool supportive beams. Uh, above and uh, some tachyderm buffalo head going on and look as I f the past me walks out the past me should be able to see the present me except me is here now instead and it's the fountain that I'm actually standing right next to right now uh, while we're watching this so why don't I see if I can do even crazier stuff and as we're looking at this video on my video, here's a little picture of yeah, Elizabeth Taylor. 
when she was out here doing her thing. And here is a little bit of a, as a picture of some of the, the leftover movie prop and then also an art exhibit that came up later on to uh, talk about Giant having been filmed here. Pretty neat. Oh, and this video is about to come to an end because we're outside, so let's turn that off. And it's still me. Hi. See? We're back again. Now, um, Marfa. Marfa gets started um, in the 1800s as a water stop, a place where steam trains could stop and refill their uh, boilers. Of course, because those boilers would be heated one way or the other in the old, earliest days, maybe with wood and then with coal, uh, then maybe gasoline driven. Uh, I guess once you had diesel, you had diesel and you were good to go. But um, the steam heats up, it drives the, the, the pistons in the engine, creating power to move the entire steam engine forward. And that's what this town was designed and set up to be, not to have its own train station, just to be a watering stop. And um, even though that's back in the, kind of the 1880s, that the train lines coming through here and it's an important space for that it's really finally by like the 1920s and 30s that marfa uh, sees a big influx of people moving to it living here uh, by 1930 the census reports almost 4,000 people uh, are living in marfa oh look here's a good view of the city hall or actually not city hall the um, county courthouse and that cupola that i was dying inside earlier on the reason why this is a video and not a live stream because it was overheating so bad and in, in there well um like i was saying the population of the um, of marfa reaches its kind of peak in 1930 um, but then after that the population has decreased ever since um, until well at a max of around 4,000 people today there's only around 1,600 people so it's lost about 50 percent of its population not a lot of people one way or the other but if Marfa continues in this direction, eventually it's going to end up a ghost town. And there's a likelihood that that might be what happens here, especially considering that um, there isn't really a lot of, of work here other than servicing the tourism economy of people that are coming to Marfa to, yeah, try to figure out what's happening here. Now, a lot of those folks are artists in their own right. And um, that's something that really, starts with a, um, a minimalist artist um, and sculptor, I'd say, uh, by the name of Donald Judd. And Donald Judd moves here in the 1970s after having visited for a while uh, on and off and then starts buying up space uh, and moving from New York to set up his full operation here. He dies in 1994, but not, out, not until after he's already created uh, and set up the Chinati Foundation, named for the, the mountain range that's not too far from here uh, to the south. This is just a, a shop that I wanted to show you guys really quick called Wrong. It's one of these boutique shops which along the street that we we're walking down here, the main drag, so to say, uh, is part of the local economy now here in, in Marfa. Um, so, so artists start coming following Judd and the Chinati Foundation, which buys up a bunch of old buildings that were um, kind of spanning across where our old school house was and also where uh, an old fort was. Because starting in 1911, you had a barracks here, uh, which is building 98. Um, which itself is now a, uh, an art installation, an art space. Um, just really quick, it's just worth noticing here in this beautiful kind of building, um, the Clarence Judd Architecture, Marfa National Bank. And, and you just see Judd all over town because it's, it's with that Judd money, that Judd Foundation, that uh, Chinati uh, Foundation that, that Marfa kind of ends up being put on the map and 
and then creating this buzz and this question of sort of what is Marfa about. There's definite hype around Marfa. Um, and it's unclear to a lot of people, you know, why this town of artists and cowboys and hipsters and border patrol agents and Instagrammers um, continues to grow from a touristic standpoint, but continues to decline as far as people that actually live here. Um, you know, there's definitely a buying boom that's taking place as people buy a property in Marfa, but not really sure necessarily why. Here's the train line, and this is the reason why Marfa is here to begin with. Uh, Marfa, a name taken from a book by none other than Jules Verne. Uh, Jules Verne, who was a, a, a novelist as well as a sci-fi sci novelist, as well as uh, wrote other types of books like this one. Michael Strogoff is the name of the book. And uh, a character in the book was named Marfa, the Russian name for Martha. Uh, and uh, it was actually one of the train company's executives' wives, who was a Jules Verne aficionado. And she said, let's call this water stop Marfa. Now, water stops, as it turns out, in the old west back in the days of cowboys and like you know like the unruly old west uh water stops like this place would have been a favorite of banditos who would have been trying to train hijack rob those trains uh, as they stop to refuel their water a little bit of wind here guys sorry about this Woo. There we go. As it turns out, uh, Wednesday, which is when I'm here right now, is not the best day to be here, Judd Foundation again. Um, it's not the best day to be here because right now with COVID still wrapping itself around us, uh, a lot of this city stays closed until Saturdays, Sundays. Well, you, Friday, let's say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even Sundays are pretty bad. So we're just, just being able to see what we what we see today as we're passing through and heading towards El Paso where you know be later on today well over here we've got City Hall let's walk over and take a look City Hall is not a massive space um, but it is where the police station is ironically Marfa has five police officers all of them hired uh, in 2018, 2019, after the city had decided in 20, excuse me, 2009 to eliminate the police force. They, they, they voted that they weren't going to spend municipal money on that any longer. And they would just trust the county police and the Texas Rangers to enforce the law. They changed their mind recently and uh, hired in a police force again. Whether it was the right call or not, I know that Marfa's really suffered as well through a decline in tourism in the last year. but. This is it. City of Marfa, Town Hall. Pretty small. And uh, we've made it to one of the other very special places in Marfa, the single one and only traffic lights in this small town. Uh, across the street from me, directly across the street, you have uh, what used to be the location of the St. Mary's Catholic Church, it's now moved down there instead because they tore down this building that was here and merged it with the one down there. Um, I'm not sure if this is an artist joke or it's serious or what, but across the street, a building there shows that coming soon, <laughs> it's going to be a Starbucks there. Uh, I don't know if it's true, if that's just an art installation, like a joke. And um, the reason why I ask myself that question is, uh, oh, come on, is because there's another place that we're going to pass through, and I'm going to put it in this video as well, um, is the Prada of Marfa, which is just a sculpture designed to look like a mini Prada out in the middle of the desert. And um, we're going to go check that out in, in the very near 
in the very near future. Now, I'm gonna walk down to this building over here, which is really cool as well. I wanna show you guys something fast. Uh, I was waving to a truck. And this is so strange, doing a, doing a video without you guys kind of talking to me. It's weird, it's a little strange. I don't think I like it as much. I don't think I could be a vlogger. Wouldn't want to. I like the, the interaction. This doesn't feel as much like tour guiding um, as, I, as I needed to, to, to love it. So over here, the Mafado Presidio, uh, Presidio County Museum. I was actually in there earlier on today. And uh, they asked me not to live stream from inside because they would need permission from their board to be able to do so. So live stream isn't gonna happen, but I am gonna show you just a little bit of video from this very cool museum here. Here we go. Whoop. Come on, video. And go. So it's full of old memorabilia to give us a feeling of yeah, of what this this area used to look like back before the hipsters, back before Anthony Bourdain filmed one of his final episodes here, back before Instagram and Beyonce uh, adding fame to this place, back when it was really that water spot stop, when it was a cowboy town where ranchers would come in and, and use the hotels, back when uh, thousands actually of soldiers, of airmen specifically, trained on the Marfa airfields between 1940 and 1945, uh, preparing for missions, World War II. Um, back before that even, you had uh, West Point graduates stationed here from 1911, you know, American military stationed from 1911 um, onwards for First World War One, but then also the Mexican Revolution to keep order along the Mexican-Texan border, which wasn't too far from us. The video we're looking at here is showing you uh, old Indian arrowheads collected from this area because, of course, before anyone else got here uh, from the from Texas, from Spain slash Mexico, of course, you had indigenous people here uh, predating by thousands of years. And um, and their remnants are, are strewn uh, in the museums and uh, buried underneath us, uh, of course. The video right now is speaking a little bit, paying a little homage to the time of when this was a, also a large military population. So, so that's very cool. All right, well, take that off the screen. And thank you very much, Marfa and Presidio County Museum. Um, there's a real feeling here of peacefulness. There's no real rush. There's nothing really kind of happening. Um, and I think that this big open sky and the dark nights and the bright mornings and the sunsets and sunrises are a big part of the thing that attracts a certain group of people to end up moving here and setting up setting up home. Um, and uh, I was listening to um, an interview of some of the local residents, and what they would say is, what they'd say is, uh, Marfa is like living on an island. If you don't have access to something, you just have to assume it does not exist. Uh, even if you wanted to get black paint, you'd have to drive 25 miles away because there is no paint shop selling black paint in Marfa. I mean, it's not against something against black paint. It's just to say that, yeah, if you can't find a kumquat, don't be surprised. No kumquats in Marfa, maybe. And like, that's just how that's gonna be. Um, another local resident I was listening to said, Marfa is a place where you sit you watch the clouds go by and let Marfa suck the poison out of you. So small town living for sure. And I think that 
that for many people that do live here of a certain class affluence, um, they're able to escape Marfa when they feel like they want to and then return as soon as they uh, feel like there's too much hustle and bustle in the outside world again. But this man is driving along in his forklift, wearing his cowboy hat. And you know, that's Texas for you right there, isn't it? I'm just gonna head down to the hardware store, get my forklift to move some stuff, and then I'm gonna head home. We have a beer, rustle some cattle. Who knows? Okay. Well, we hear you, Union Pacific Railroad. Thank you for the work you do. We're going to cross over this way and uh, head back up towards the town hall where I've parked the car. That magic car, which is heading on to Las Vegas to eventually be sold and turned into tour maps flyers for Europe. One of the problems for Marfa is that there's not a hospital nearby um, able to provide lots of services. And it's, a, it's always a fear for the Marfians, as they call themselves, Look close to Martians for a city which is famous for weird dancing lights that appear sometimes in the middle of the night. Um, but the Marfians, how cool and weird these plants are, Jeez. I feel like I'm, I'm <laughs> in Mars right now with some of the plant life and the landscape here. You know, that, that Texas lobster <laughs> creature. <laughs> That was in my video before. What the heck was that? But uh, the Marfians are afraid that too much hype will bring too much tourism and uh, the wrong sort of tourism as well. Kind of like festival tourism, like Coachella, Bonnaroo tourism. And there's just not an infrastructure here to be able to handle that. Even with our kitschy small shops like Wrong and, you know, the fancy restaurants. Oh, here's a cool spot. This is the Ain the Foundation. Why don't we just take a quick peekaboo here, even though it's closed, like a lot of things. Do a quick peekaboo in through the window. See if we can see a little bit of what's going on with the walls in here. Just trying to protect against the glare here for you guys. You don't see the building directly behind me the whole time. You actually see what's on the walls in there. Oh man, I feel like I'm trying. I'm trying hard here. You get the idea. Art galleries. Lots of art galleries. It's like something like, uh, I think during, they were saying that 2008, nine, during the uh, financial crisis that we had, the, um, there was only like one or two galleries left in Marfa, um, but today it's back around the 20 gallery mark. I wonder how it worked out with the pandemic and how many things have closed. I'm not really sure, oops. It's a cool little shop, come on. Neat spot, hi there. Person was not super appreciative, but Octio Botanica. Herbalist and apothecary. The guy from the uh, the visitor center recommended that I go in there if I'm looking for CBD joints. I said, "Thank you, my friend," but that's okay. I can skip the CBD. If I'm gonna go for a joint, it's gonna go all the way. I go all the way. Little desert coyote here. Hello. Nice to see you guys again. And that's it. This video was, despite the fact that we walked back and forth through the town, both directions, we're still going to come in at just 30 minutes. So small town of Marfa. Um, great space 
for minimalist artists. For everyone else, you might wonder why we're here, right? And um, I won't, uh, I won't lie to you. I almost didn't come to Marfa at all because I read from a lot of people. They were like, didn't know what I was doing there, and I kind of followed the hype. But I feel like this is not a spot to come and stay for a couple hours. It's a place to come and become part of it. Enjoy. So, hey guys. All right. Well, take one last look over here at the courthouse, or the county courthouse. Our Marfa water tower. Alfred Giles's contribution to this part of Texas in front of us here. And uh, thank you, Marfa. Thank you for your, your ghost palace and your exceedingly warm temperatures. And uh, I will probably not be back, but the nice thing is, is that we'll all be able to remember this journey together by watching this video another time. Thank you guys very much. Mwah. Sorry not to be able to see you personally right now, but hopefully we'll all be in the chat together later on. Until El Paso. Until then. Bye.